Oh, welcome into Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. And this is Jacob Waters. And we are back after a short hiatus. We were gone last week. Jacob got a little bit of sun, almost as dark as I am. I did. I did yeah. good. I did just a good. Li- guys, just look at that. almost, almost as dark that. as I am. I am red. I got no sun. Mm-hmm. I worked all week, which was a lot of fun. Got to make money. You got to spend it. So yes, it worked yes. out. Um, guys, we are back. We are doing a little bit of... Look, I'll be honest with you. This is this is a laid back pod. We spent about five minutes maybe playing this one, so this has a, there's a good chance this goes off the rails. So we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Julio Jones thing, and then we're gonna break down uh, my top 24 non quarterback <laughs> dynasty rankings. That video is gonna be going coming out on a Wednesday. This video should either be coming out late Wednesday or Thursday. So if you're interested in checking out like my entire video breaking down my entire ranking, it's like a 40 minute video. You can and check that out or just skip to like any particular spot i'll have it all in the uh in the uh, description or comments wherever i end up putting it um so you can check that out but we're going to be talking about it here he can break it down he has not looked at it except for nope. a couple minutes ago just to kind of take a look so i'm excited to hear what his thoughts are um yeah hey ready to go yeah i'm all here all right let's let's hear it. how was your trip it was good it was a good trip it was a fun trip um a lot of ocean yeah. There's a lot of ocean. You know, that's where it goes. That's where it is lot, in Florida, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of ocean out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, caught a pet crab. He's a cool dude. What's his name? Listen. Yo, I didn't name the not, crab. Okay, it's not a pet. Then. Okay. I guess it was more of a slave of nature, if you will. Slave of nature. <laughs> he, he roamed into my area, and I said, you're coming. Now. <laughs> you're mine now. Okay. And we let him go. Nice. It was, it was a good, good trip. Good. Um, nice. I, I'm trying to think. It was good food. I yeah. like shrimp. I was actually broadened my horizons a lot whenever it came to the food tasting palate. Okay. I had some amberjack. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. That's, Me neither. That just sounds like a football player. Well, I learned how to say it, so I figured I better learn how to try it, too. So okay. it was, it was Amber, good. It sounds like he plays for the Steelers. What the fuck? Amberjack? Yeah. Amber, it does sound like a, <laughs> it sounds like an old school Dolphins player. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm glad to be back, though. It's it's good. Okay. The weather was good. I did not miss Tennessee humidity. I don't believe it's for it. Damn it is sure. hot as fuck right in here. Yes. All right. Uh, well, let's get right into it. Obviously, not really a lot of news going on right now, but the Julio Jones saga has begun and has continued, and here we are. I mean, it, it could happen any day. June 1st is today, right? So we're recording this on June 1st. A lot of things are going to happen now, now that the the official league year has started. So a lot of contra- contractual issues are going to happen. A, a Zach Ertz trade is supposed to be happening. A, a <coughs> Julio Jones trade seems a lot more likely now, now that it is officially past June yeah, 1st. Happening, yeah. it, it, that, that was happening anyway. Um, let's, let's start with, because oh, I've not talked to you pretty much for the past week, and it was last week sometime when they when uh, Shannon Sharp calls Julio Jones on his personal cell phone while he is on TV yep. and and just doesn't tell him he's on TV and says, hey, man, what are you doing? You know, are you going to stay with, Al- with Atlanta? And he says, no, I'm out of there. I want to go somewhere that wins, blah, blah, blah. And it was this whole TV interview <clears throat> that he had no idea was being recorded. How fucked is that? Shannon did him dirty. So dirty. <clears throat> he did him dirty. I mean, you at least got to let whoever you know, like, hey, you're alive right now in front of X amount of people. Yes. Oh my goodness. Julio wouldn't have said that because Julio's always so been a sad. guy who stays out of the spotlight. Yeah. Who always does it the right way. Who is very, I would say, just reserved. In- inward and reserved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very quiet based, shows up, does his job. And that was not like Julio's. And there's nothing wrong with what Julio did. It was on Shannon for not letting him know, hey, you have an audience in front of you right yeah. now. Do you want the entire Atlanta Falcons <clears throat> fan base to know this right now? Exactly. Like, is that is that how you want this to come out? It, it was. I, I found it to be incredibly disrespectful, shitty. All of these things for Shannon to just. I mean, just a cheap ploy to get a little know, bit of buzz. I mean, known, right? Like, in, I I don't think so. Based on what the been good TV. one of the one of the you know the lady. I don't watch that show, yeah. but one of the ladies there was like. Tell him that he's live. Like she said it while he was on the phone, while they were like doing the little interview. Uh, you watch the clip, and and she goes, "Tell him that he's live, or he's live." And you literally hear Shannon rise. He's about to hang it up. I I feel like you could see him realize, "Oh shit, I never told him that that he's yeah, live." Like and, and he's spilling and, the beans right now. And he literally at the end he goes he goes, uh, "You're live, by the way." So I'll, I'll see you. We're gonna let you go. And, and click. I mean, dude, it was so. But did you watch the full clip? No, you I, didn't watch. I, oh, I need, I need to go back and watch. Yeah, it. Yeah, the full I bet clip you could is just, so sad. You can almost like 
see the awkwardness in the room. Oh guess, man, yeah. yeah, no, it's it was it was weird. I probably should have put it up. Like I said, we did, we didn't spend a whole lot of time preparing this one. Uh, but yeah, I, I probably should like said it, it was a weird one. Definitely go listen to the whole thing. Don't don't just listen to like the clip of an interview. It was not an interview. It was it was it was. I mean. A, a, it was a fly on the wall conversation. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I, I, I thought it was kind of shitty, but here we are. He's out of there. We we know that, and it makes sense for for Atlanta to move on to be able to pay their guys. Where do you want to see him to go? You know, what what are the things that you've heard the most? And then I want to give you something that I I mentioned to you right before we started yeah. recording, and I want to break. I, I want to give you my little. Theory. Um, where should he go? That would be the best fit. Um, a place that I am terrified that he should go a place that would also make their quarterback happy would be Green Bay. Mm -hmm. I think if if you're the Packers and hopefully you have come to terms now that you are the bad guys in this relationship with Aaron Rodgers, you have you know shown up time and time again to not give him the weapons, I think one of the best ways you can do it is to get him the weapon in Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. He is a phenomenal weapon, still has it all. Him and Devontae Adams would pair off great. Wow. It, yeah. It'd be scary. It yeah. would be beyond scary to think that teams would have to try to stop that. No. Um, the Chargers is another one that I like. Yeah. That would really help out the young arm and Justin Herbert, who's mm -hmm. looking to avoid the sophomore slump and really take his, you know, I mean, some people are already saying he's a top 10 quarterback. I think he's up there. Yeah. Yeah. He's certainly, that, he's certainly that, in that, that that's conversation. That's not even when you look at it like age wise, they're mm -hmm. saying just based on one yeah. year alone next year, he is a top 10 quarterback. Yeah. So, and he's talented, very talented. Why not go out there and get that? I've seen them in the market for it. Seattle came out of nowhere. That one doesn't make sense to me. Still. I don't think I don't think that's going to be the movie. It, it just, I, I look yeah. at Seattle. I'm like, okay, you got DK, you got Lockett, and I know they they could use another piece. But could you lose like Julio is the another piece? I don't know. That just doesn't. That one didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It makes sense why Russell would want it. it makes sense why the players would want it. Obviously, I mean, yeah. I, it seems like a lot of people want to go play with Russell. I mean, that that makes sense to me. Why not? Yeah, but I, I don't I don't see that from a football standpoint. Though the team I'm surprised you didn't mention yet is our you know they're That's, in our no, backyard. I was, I was about to. Yeah, I, was about to mention, I was about to mention the backyard one in the Tennessee Titans, and I'm going to mention why I think it, it it sounds so good. It sounds really really good, but. Titans fans, pump the brakes. I'll let you know. I, I'm all for it. I want Julio to come to Tennessee because I think it would be a phenomenal move for the Titans. They don't normally do that kind of thing. And for John Robinson, who misses on a lot of first-round picks, mm -hmm. for me, I'm okay with them getting rid of a first. I know they've already had talks about that being the second-round pick going for Julio. That's fine, and your wide receiver uh, room looks atrocious. You've lost a lot of pieces, yeah. and in the areas where they were supposed to go get some, they haven't yet. So it all lines up to get Julio. But I'm just wondering who's going to get fed. How does it work in this offense where you run Derrick Henry? Yeah. He is the focal point of this offense, and you have a Tannehill who's more of a play action based role. For sure, for it's, sure. I, I, Julio, I get what Julio's you're saying. leading Matt Ryan, who is a, a really good quarterback, better mm. than Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Julio's happiness would be in Tennessee. I, man, I don't. I, I, to me, probably, there's. You seem surprised. You didn't think I'd take that? Yeah, route. no, I did, definitely didn't. I mean, I look at. I pulled up their depth chart right here. You look at their wide receiver depth chart specifically. After AJ Brown, you got Josh Reynolds this past year from the Rams. Okay, great. You got Chester Rogers. You got Des Fitzpatrick. You drafted in the fourth round. You got Nick Westbrook, or, who was an undrafted free agent last year. You got McMay, you know, Rick Kay, a sixth rounder. Yeah. Like, there's nobody. No, they there's need, nobody after AJ Brown. They need Julio. They yeah. desperately need him. I'm looking at this from a Julio stance on... Why would yeah. you not want to go to the team that's that's made it... I mean, once the AFC Championship two yeah, years okay. ago and made it to the playoffs two years in a row. I mean, that's... I get, the, but they're a play-action first team, though. Yes, if that is his goal, he wants to win. Okay, and but, A.J. Brown has said I, all the right things. I mean, you can't tell me that there's not... He, there is certainly a role to be had there with A.J. Brown on the other side and Derrick Henry getting the ball. I understand the run first, but I still think... I would still think he gets fifteen to twenty percent of targets, or, or you know, you know, right off the bat from day one, pretty much. You would hope, but and AJ Brown AJ even Brown. AJ Brown even said, "I'll that take the back take, seat." He even mentioned AJ Brown's fine. We're going for five hundred because I really yes, do think, I think AJ Brown them, loves him. One of them is going to get pinned from about five hundred to a thousand yards. Man, I don't. I, I I do think the Titans' offense could could handle two thousand yard receivers. I, I do. I yes, do think they, it they could. Are, they are capable of doing that. Do I think that they want to do that? No. We know how the Titans want to play football. I'm gonna. Uh, so I get that. I'm gonna look up what Corey Davis and AJ Brown did last year. I'm just yeah, kind of curious. That's fine. I, I know that the Titans. I mean, because like you said, it's AJ Brown and who was the other one? Chester Ro Ch Chester Rogers Reynolds. I mean Josh, Josh Reynolds. Reynolds that's yeah. Who it was. No, Julio is a massive upgrade from anyone else on that team, even close. Even AJ Brown. Julio Jones is better. Yeah. Julio Jones is a, a phenomenal weapon. They need him. I want it to happen. I'm looking at it from just the way that the team plays, though. You know, I, I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just saying, look, A.J. Brown got 1,075 yards last year. Corey Davis got 984. He did. That was also so, Corey Davis's best year. Oh, of course. Yeah. But, but I, That's Corey Davis, A.J. Brown right now is better than Corey Davis's best year. Period. Yeah, for sure. The A.J. Brown right now, I would say he's even better than A.J. than A.J. Brown. I mean, So it would be safe to assume that they, they could, the, tit- the Titans they could can both produce. hit a thousand. Ryan Tannehill is a 3,500-yard passer. Yeah. I think that's fair. That's Consistently. Right exactly. I mean, Very consistently. I think he's right around 35. What? 38. 38. 38 in 2020. They can support 2,000 yards. I get it. I want to see it happen. I'm just worried that it would just take I, – I think there might be some growing pains there. I really do. Okay. I really do. I want to see it happen. John Robinson sucks with those late first round picks anyways. <laughs> Get rid of him. It's okay. Get rid of the second. Oh, I don't think he'll be a first. I, I do think he's going for a second. I, I would be will as a Titans fan, I would be okay with letting go of a first for Julio Jones. Okay. I, I don't know if I would I don't think I would tell any team to get rid of a first for Julio right now. As I like you got three years left, probably three well, or four years yet. Switch it up on me though. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I'm saying three three or four years of of prominent, really good play, right? That's what I'm expecting. Yeah. And you know the injury situation is there, right? Like the, he he's of had course, injury issues this past year. He yeah, needs, so it, yeah. I don't I don't know. You give up a first for that? I, I would certainly give up a second. I think a second, any team, even if you're expected to draft early second, I would be fine giving up a second. Which obviously Julio doesn't want to go to a team that's drafting early second. Yes, but like I, I would if I'm the Titans. A second is gone. They they got it. Dylan Radden is in the yes. second. I would trade Dylan Radden for Julio Jones. Gone. Right? <laughs> it's, it's not even a question. That's what I'm yeah. saying. For the first though, you know, you showed the. You're need saying for this you're team. willing to give up more than yes, I am. Because okay. You, you said you've you've recognized the need on the Titans right now mm-hmm. is wide receiver. They did not attack that in any way in free agency nor the draft, in my opinion, in ways that they could have. Yeah, yeah. They got Julio, they got Des Patrick in the fourth. Exactly. That's not special. Julio is the move right now for yeah. this team. I'm just saying I am a little standoffish by it. I just. It just sounds too good to be true, man. Every time that I get hyped up behind what the Titans have and what they look like, yeah, yeah, it, it does feel like one of those every things, time it's just that not it's their year to take it, they will drop the ball. Okay, fair enough. We'll All see right, them. I want to bring up one more team that I love the idea of, and the Bills. That what they did today makes me think, ooh, ooh, let's think about that for a second. Uh, the Bills converted. All but nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars of Stefan Diggs' contract into signing bonus, so they opened up just over eleven million dollars in salary cap for this year. That's going somewhere. Well, just, and you got to think saying. who was the last wide receiver that they traded for for a first round pick? <laughs> Stephon yeah. Diggs. Yeah, uh-huh. it, it shows that it works, and for Buffalo. That is the match that I want to see. Man, that, that would be ridiculous. Stephon Diggs, and, Josh Allen, and Julio Jones. And you got to think they 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 lost uh, they lost Brown last year. Yes. You look at their wide receiver core. They they have a very up and coming Gabriel Davis, who obviously fourth round pick in twenty twenty showed some spark. Could be really mm-hmm. good. You got Cole Beasley in the slot. Beyond that. Nothing really there. Like, there's nobody else that you think is stepping up. Maybe a Duke Williams who has, has shown some sparks here and there. Yeah. Uh, I know you're a big fan of uh, Isaiah Hodgins. Like, I'm just going down their roster. It, it's Stefan Diggs and, and Cole Beasley, and that's about it. You you might be comfortable with Gabriel Davis right now, but you can't tell me the upgrade wouldn't be there. I mean, oh, the upgrade is ridiculous, not even right? Close. Yeah, Julio, this is a team that can go to the and championship then, game and then push the Titans even. The, this, I think the Bills are built better than the Titans. This is a team you get. I would not have a problem if this team said, fuck it, we'll give up a first. We think the first could be the 32nd pick in the draft. Exactly. I mean, it, I think Same if they're the Titans, looking like that. Regard, though, that's why if, if, you, if you really think that you were that piece away, mm-hmm. I think this team is closer than the Titans are. And we're talking, we're talking, we're talking it's close. The Titans yeah. are a playoff caliber football team. Yeah. But the Bills are a window wide open football team ready to start their dynasty, I think. The Bills with, with have built one for more year before they have to pay him. Yes. One more year before they have to pay, have to pay Josh Allen and things get tricky after that. Yeah, then you got to start balancing some books. Josh exactly. Allen's going to want to re up and be in that Mahomes deal. Oh, as he's he going to be, yeah. As he should. Yeah. But he, like you said, shoot your shot. Go for it. And it, when you shoot your shot, it's measuring Lombardi's, man. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And I mean, man, wouldn't that be exciting? So that, I like that one a whole lot. I don't know. I'm going to look up there's, there's. Do you have any other teams where I just look up their cap situation as, as a whole right now? Uh, the Colts. The Colts are an interesting I, I, one as well. I, the Colts a lot. Um, it, it's a good fit. The, the Colts have had a lot of. They've they've spent a lot of time trying to bring in young wide receivers mm-hmm. throughout the draft in the second, third rounds is really where they target those at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of them have hit. Paris Campbell, we've seen the injuries. Michael Pittman looks like a for sure thing. So yeah. far going forward. I like Michael Bibbin a lot. I, I you, you mentioned it. Yeah, I, I, I do uh, agree for the sure. The Colts are one. The Eagles. I've seen the Eagles mentioned a lot just because how lackluster their wide receiver core is historically mm-hmm. for the past few years. But Julio wants to go somewhere he wants to win now. And I'm sorry, Philadelphia fans, I don't think you're winning no. now. Yeah. No. 
you got a long way to go. Y'all are. Yeah, you know, no, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I can't find how much cap space they have now. I'm looking. The move that move though uh, does does raise your eyebrows with the Bills. Dude, it I, does. I haven't heard the Bills get mentioned yet. Yeah. But both of us said early on that we wanted to see them make a move for a, a top end wide receiver, or we want to see them make a trade for someone. I mean, I, I mentioned a you know weeks ago that I wanted to see Odell Beckham get moved. Yeah. For, to the to the Bills just for that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he goes back to New York. It's not the ideal New York team that you want to go to, but yeah. you know you're still in New York. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, that's interesting. So there, there's some interesting spots. You, you think it's going to happen, though, right? Julio is 100% on the move. He's going, and if, yeah. I had to fi- if I had to put my money where my mouth is and say where he lands, he's going to the Tennessee Titans. Okay, so so instead of where he lands, what, put your money where your mouth is, what's he going to go for? Uh, I think he's going to go to the Titans for a second and a third round pick. Okay. I, I was I, I was thinking second and fifth. Yeah, that, that's, so that's fair. That's, that's fair where too. I was at. So, I, I okay, we're in the, the same I'm ballpark. I'm hoping that the Titans and, recognize that they yeah. may need to do the overpay just a tad to make sure you get him. Because what happens the, for the Titans when you miss out on Julio? Yeah, well, I get the part part of the uh, part of the the thing for me is like the reason I don't think he's going to first. The reason I think the the Falcons are going to be underpaid for Julio ver- based on what Julio's value is is because you got to pay him the second highest wide receiver contract. Yeah. I mean that's that's real. That's a real thing, especially exactly. this year. So it, almost it, in a way, the team is doing the Falcons a favor yeah. by getting that and, contract off. Their and hands. Julio has some power here. The Julio has some control. He's not just going yeah. go to go. He's not going to go to the bottom half of the NFL. He, he's no. been on the uh, aside from the one year they went to the Super Bowl. He's been on a bad Falcons team, really. I mean, honestly, and it's been it's been rough. His defense has let him down for years now. So like he's probably going to be looking I, for a I team. I really that, don't want to be about that Tannehill slander. I really don't. I like Tannehill. He's a very Tannehill's good a top team. fifteen quarterback in the NFL. He's good. He's but good enough. Packers? He's really, no. Yeah, not even close. Seattle? No. Not even close, yeah. Chargers? Debatable. Yeah, I, I, I would rather I, have I'd say Herbert's no. much better, yeah. Exactly. Okay, I would. Buffalo? Much better than Tannehill, yeah. Um, I said top 15. He's he's an average no, quarterback he in the is, NFL. But it just so happens that the other teams that we're hearing in this conversation have superstars. elite superstar yeah. quarterback play, For not sure. just, really good. you know, service. Yeah, yeah service. Tannehill's better than that. He's a good quarterback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I completely agree. All right, let's let's move, let's uh, switch focus here, and I'm going to put it on the screen just for everybody. Uh, the my top 24 non quarterback dynasty list. And I know that's a weird one. Uh, basically, I, I went into the video. I was like, okay, I'm going to do a dynasty rankings list, and I thought about putting quarterbacks in, and I was like, ah. It's not fun to me because because then the whole conversation is like, OK, how do I value the quarterbacks versus everyone else? And the whole quarterback conversation is not fun because like if you're going to rank the dynasty rankings based on fantasy, this is fantasy conversation. Yeah. Now we're switching gears a little bit here. I, I go basically the way they got drafted in the first round. Right. I mean, it's Lawrence, number one. How can you not have him? Number one, as Zach Wilson, number two. I think those are both guys going to be superstars. Uh, then you, you you look at Lance went number three. He's they, that would be my third with uh, Kyle Shanahan. I, I would I would look at uh, I would would look at fields four and then Mac five. Like that would be how I would rank them if I were doing a dynasty ranking for them. Of course. Yeah. So, so it's take them out. Exactly. So I took them out and I was like, okay, let's do top 24. I was thinking two, 12, you know, a 12 team league, two rounds. That's kind of how I did it. It's tough. And I know people are going to give me shit for it. I I, I know I'm going to get backlash here and there because it is a little bit of a weird list at points. And that's totally fair. Like I went on a combination of my, my strategy for dynasty football in general and just my rankings of these players. and, And it is a little different, but man, I, I, I implore you to do a top 24 with no quarterbacks and let me know where you get in the last after like with the last five specifically they're hard <laughs> it's it's splitting hairs and it's just like throwing darts at a wall essentially uh, as far as like okay who, who do I think could hit who who do I think has a good chance like yeah, exactly looking at it from that but I'm, let's put it all on the board and I just want you to react to it give me tear me apart I guess uh, <laughs> That's what I'm no saying. I'm not gonna tear you apart it's it's hard because the thought process that could go into each one you know like a like a Kenneth Gainwell I know for you personally you really liked him as a running back mm-hmm. whenever he was getting drafted but the landing spot having to go to the Eagles um, sitting behind a Miles Sanders yeah. So, who knows where he's going to fit in there? They've also brought on a carry on Johnson, who I don't think is going to contribute much, but they, they also brought on another running back, too. They've added two or three names to that running back room, and it's kind of hard to see where Kenneth Gamewell is going to fit in. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And Kenneth Gamewell at 14, just for those listening on the pod, uh, yeah, I I was bold there. This was this was one of my definitely more bold picks, and, and the, the thought process was I'm not a Miles Sanders guy. And I when I do my video, I actually like I state that at the time, like, hey, this is my opinion, I, and you can disagree with this, and that's totally fine. I don't know if you agree with this or not, but in general, I'm not a Miles Sanders guy. I, I don't, I don't believe in Miles Sanders, and I do think that Kenneth Gamble has a really good chance of overtaking that job. I really do, and you're absolutely 
absolutely right. They they brought in Carryon Johnson. To me, Carryon Johnson, he he dropped the ball. I don't I don't expect him to be a whole lot. They brought in Jordan Howard. I don't expect him to be a whole lot. Uh, do a whole lot. I still liked having Kenneth a Boston Gainwell. Scott though and a Miles Sanders. I mean, I totally get it. There there's a there is a world. But to me, Kenneth Gainwell was the fourth best running back in this class, and I know he didn't go there. I know he went fifth round. And hey, maybe I'm just wrong about that. Like that's totally fair too. But I based it a lot on the way I liked him. I valued him as a second round running back, which is a lot for me. And I I looked at him and I was like, man, I, I see a world where he is the RB one on this team. I, I do. So so that was that was my thought process. Certainly high, certainly, but one of my more bold picks as far as like my ranking. Uh, but I, I do believe in him, and I'll, I'll put my money where my mouth is right now and say like I'm probably gonna have a lot of shares of Kenneth Gainwell because he's gonna be essentially free in most drafts. He will. And, he will. and and I'm I'm valuing it, man. I, I really am. I'm excited about it. It's good. Um, I'll, I'll give you some props here. I mean, it's, it's props. It's hard to get wrong. Would Jamar Chase be number one, though? Jamar yeah. Chase is the easy one. A lot of people are scared, though. I'm seeing a lot of people being scared about that wide receiver room and how deep it is, thinking that they have Jamar Chase, a Tyler Boyd, and a T. Higgins. I'll put it to rest by saying last year, I, I'll equate this to the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver room and saying that every single one of those guys, Claypool, Deontay Johnson, and Juju, the worst one was Deontay Johnson. He was wide receiver 35. That is really good when you come to fantasy numbers. Yeah. Each one fits above that. I think the Bengals wide receiver room is capable of doing that. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Jamar Chase is probably my favorite one out of that entire room, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. So for Jamar Chase, it was just, I'm not going to overthink it. He was uh, coming into the class. He was my number one non quarterback on the board. I, I love Jamar Chase. He was my guy. Um, he goes to the Bengals. He goes to Joe Burrow. And, and listen, you're right. It is a big quarterback. Or it, it is a, you know, it's a stacked room. You know, he, he was in college with Justin Jefferson, Terrace Marshall, and him. And he was the guy in that year, right? He was he was the yeah. dude. And as much as we talked about Justin Jefferson, because that was you know that was the year he came out in the draft. He ended up being a first round pick. Jamar Chase overshadowed him, and we saw how good Jamar Je- Jefferson was in the NFL. I, I think Je- or, excuse me, Justin Je- I said Jamar Jefferson. Justin Jefferson was in the NFL, obviously with the Vikings. I think Jamar Je- Chase is going to uh, light the world on fire. I really do. I think he's a superstar. And, and to me, I just wasn't going to overthink it. That was my value. He, he goes to a team that I like their quarterback. Back beyond that, I just I couldn't overthink it beyond that. No, there's nothing there's nothing to it. I'll I'll pick on you for the two three four right here because I think it'd be a good argument to have. Yeah, um, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts to me well, is the number two. Okay, so so my two three four: uh, Najee Harris, Travis Edian, and Kyle Pitts. You think Kyle Pitts should be number two? Kyle Pitts should be number two for me. Man, I, I get it. I thought I was pretty high with four. I'm not going to lie to you. Really? <laughs> I did. I think Listen, he's I, still a tight end, right? Man, like, or, is he transferred the, to wide receiver he, he yet? He's a true offensive weapon is the way that I word him. He has a wingspan greater than the last record holder of a DK Metcalf. He physically blows you off the charts. Yes, I know he's listed at tight end, but with the, the soon-to-be departure of Julio Jones, because we all know that's happening. Kyle Pitts is going to step up, and I think he's going to fill a role. I get it. Dude, I do get it. I think so, he's got it. I, 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 first of all, I do think the the overhype for Kyle Pitts in the fantasy community is real, and I know I'm I'm slightly more like yeah. like I I've, I've, I follow people on Twitter and stuff that just live that every day, and that's all they think about. So so I'm kind of coming from from that angle. Yard eight touchdown. Uh, a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. That, I, 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 don't, I, think I, don't think running, I don't think I'm overzealous in saying that, yeah, but I don't think, I think anyone two, else below him on the list. I think the two running backs ahead of him on my list, at least, are, are going to both be 1,000-yard rushers and, and have the opportunity to catch out of the backfield and, and all of these other things as well. So Najee, yeah. Najee has that. So Najee versus Pitts is where you really get me on that argument because I think Najee's stepping into the clear-cut role yeah. where he's the guy. But then again, they have some pieces there that they like and they've been wanting to run and spell him with. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how Jacksonville – if they use him in the way like we see this Swiss Army, I think he's, he's going to be used the way Le'Veon Bell was used. And, and if they use him like that, then Travis Etienne is a better pick yeah. than Najee based off of that. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be I used the way Le'Veon Bell was James used. James Robinson's going to take out of his mouth because you can't just you can't just put him out to dry. James Robinson, they're not. The he'll be the number two. Rusher. Yeah, yeah, he'll be the number two, but he won't be in, the number in one. Many years at Jacksonville, James Robinson did good. Yeah, I, I was surprised by the big, but we're beyond that, right? Like yeah, you're, you're right. You're Travis right, Etienne will be the number one. You don't draft a running back to go behind anybody else, right? Like you draft no, you don't draft there, a running back no in the way. first round. Yeah, excuse there, me. There's no way. You yeah, do that. Uh, to me, Kyle Pitts. Listen, I, I love Kyle Pitts. I do. I, I he's number four for a reason, and I don't want to. I don't want to take the stance to where I'm hating on him by any means, but like, there's at least uh, you're you're saying he's clear cut. There's zero percent chance he's anything but superstar unless he gets hurt, right? And that's kind of yes. I think to me, to me, there's like a ninety percent chance he's superstar unless he gets hurt, right? Like, I still I still reserve a little. And again, this is minor. I I want to be I want to be in that same breath though. I'm not saying that he's a for sure. Well, you you, but if if you were to rank the Titans right now in the NFL, where does Kyle Pitts land? 
I, I know I know it's hard to do it off the top of your head. So, but go ahead and have Kelsey, Darren Waller, Kittle. Yeah, they're all ahead of him for uh, sure. But I think after that, once you get into that weird that area, next tier, I think yeah, he falls he's going like to be in that, that conversation. That yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. The, the only thing I'm going to say, and then the reason, like, okay, I'm going to have a little bit of reservations with the Kyle Pitts right now, is because I have seen the tight ends that have been drafted in the first round and how they've done year one. And again, like the TJ Hawkinson, he's been awesome. His year one was good, but it wasn't special. It, you look at no fan, no fan's been good, and I think he has a chance to really step in in his you know year three. I don't. But think he you was. Can, you can't compare him to the other. Oh, I, I get it, yeah. but I, I get it. He's the best tight end to come back, come out in a long time. He's not comparable to any of these guys. OJ Howard, you know Evan Ingram, all of these first round tight ends that were that were highly touted. He is not comparable. I get that, but there has been a long and substantial history of. Year one tight end does not produce. Yeah. So so and, and listen, I have him at four on my list because I believe he will buck that trend. But how much he'll buck that trend? Come on, I, I just I, I think I, I only look at it solely from the fact that I don't view him as just your your regular tight. Yeah, I, think, I get I that. Think if I get you were that. to compare him to any of those tight ends that you mentioned in the first round, it would be Evan Ingram, and that argument goes in your favor. Evan Ingram is a miss in my opinion. Yeah. Com- compared to what he should be doing, the amount of drops that he had. I mean, he single handedly cost the Giants. Technically, a Two playoff games. spot. Two games. And that's a playoff spot yeah. based on this last year. Mm-hmm. You know, because, but his, his speed, his physicality, that's the thing. Kyle Pitts has Special. all of that, man. I mean, there's, there's a. He's, yeah, he's bigger and, and yeah. faster almost. Like, um, it's crazy. I think, I think some people might feel the. So we have Devontae Smith at five. Not mm-hmm. going to argue that. I think he's going to do really well in Philadelphia. He has all the reasons to do that and all the yeah. tools necessary. Co- goes into the clear cut number exactly. one. I mean, he'll have every opportunity to succeed. Yeah. Uh, but number six, Michael Carter for the Jets. Yeah, this is another bold one. This is, I like this is, it, though. My, Michael Carter was my number five running back coming into, into the draft. And now, technically, he's my number three, ranked after, after the draft, obviously. Obviously, um, I I look at Michael Carter going into a perfect spot with the Jets. And, and you know, I recorded this video and it's, it'll be coming out soon. Obviously, you haven't watched it or anything. But I, I just talk about it and it's like, I wasn't a LeMichael P. Ryan fan last year. They drafted LeMichael P. Ryan in the fourth round last year. I didn't see anything out of him last year to make me think I was wrong there. And, hey, maybe I was wrong. The, the Jets weren't good last year. We'll see. Beyond Michael LeMichael P. Ryan, beyond, you know, a couple other, you know, running backs that are just been journeymen in the NFL, there's nobody else there. Michael Carter is the clear cut. He has such a perfect opportunity. And on top of that, like already right there with that information, knowing that I liked him as my fifth favorite running back, knowing that I believe in in the talent enough, that's enough for me to take notice and be really excited. Add on to the fact that he's going into my single favorite running back offense in the NFL. It's the Kyle Shanahan offense. It's not Kyle. It's not the 49ers, but it's the Kyle Shanahan offense. That's where he's going. He, it is Mike LaFleur that that's uh, the offensive coordinator there. It, it is Robert Sala that's coming from the 49ers. They're going to be running that scheme. And Michael, and Michael Carter fits it perfect. He does. He does. And to think that this is the new era for the Jets. This is where yes. they're trying to find their faces going forward. Mm-hmm. You got the quarterback. You have Corey Davis, who you brought in at wide receiver. Elijah Moore, who is also at number 11 on your mm-hmm. list. He's a very good option, by the way. Mm-hmm. And you have Michael Carter at running back. I think this could be a whole new era where you were trying all these different pieces. Mm-hmm. And like you said, with this running back by committee approach, when you don't really have that many running back by committees to run, Michael Carter's the guy who's going to stand out. And still, P. Ryan will be there, of course. But yeah. yes, it's Michael Carter's to take. Yeah. And then, and then the next guy, J- uh, Javon. Javante Williams, who you know, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to that's talk about him. My, at all. That's one of my. Favorites. I like Javante Williams a lot. The, the the Broncos were geniuses, by the way. They dr- they jump ahead of the Dolphins to take him at thirty five overall. It was it was a super smart move by them. I I, I thought Melvin Gordon uh, he sl- he he lost a step last year to me. To me, I, I saw the decline. I think this is going to be his last year of actually having the starting job to start the season. And I think Javante Williams takes it over at some point during the season. I really do. I think he, I think by week 11, 12, for sure. Javante Williams is a starting running back for the Bengals, for the uh, Broncos. I do. To me, there's value. It's, there. No, no. Well, it's it's hard for me to argue that because of how much I like Javante Williams. Yeah, I, I really do. I think Melvin Gordon They're the still same has, guy too. Exactly. That's They're the, the same thing. motherfucker. So, so you'll take the young, you know, you'll take the younger, <laughs> the younger one, version, the, one the same fresher. guy. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure Melvin Gordon. This is the last year on his contract, anyways, in Denver. Is it? So you would okay. think it's either that or one more. I, yeah, I, I think I'm he signed sure, a three year. I, I wasn't sure. I, I know it's coming to an end soon, though. Yeah. Um, and I would. I really don't think that experiment worked out in his favor in, in saying. You, 
it's a it's a good offense. Hopefully this year they can really get things going. There's carries to be had, mm-hmm. and I think you're right in saying Javante will eventually take that over. So when it comes to dynasty rankings, looking at the future, I, I looked at the first he is two years. A workhorse back yeah. who can be a one through three down guy, and that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and then that was my whole thing with this. I I I don't know if I explained that at the top of this show, but I certainly did in the in the video I recorded. I, it was I was thinking two years in the future. Mm-hmm. I was that that was that was as far as I was willing to really think because beyond that, come on, the, this this list changes. Through Three weeks after the season starts, let alone a year, let alone two years. So, so I I looked at it like okay, two years in the future. How do I see the team developing? How do I see the weapons around them developing? And, and yeah, Javante Williams to me, clear cut starter in two years. Clear cut uh, starter at the end of this year. I would say looking at it from the two year lens because I was doing it on and off, you know, with the dynasty mm-hmm. approach, looking yeah. in, looking in this year immediate production. Why is a Rondell Moore so low for you at seventeen? Especially yeah. when I look at it through a two-year lens, I can yeah, see. Yeah, I get it. There, it was a combination of two things. One, uh, the he is going to a stacked roster to me as far as, uh, you know, A.J. Green is there. You have you have Christian Kirk, who I'm not ready to just, you know, shut the door on completely. Of course. He's, I, he's, he's, you he's know, I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, he's certainly not looking good so far, but we'll see. And then, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins, right? So so there's pieces there that, that to me, already limits his ceiling as far as, like, top end. And, and then, yeah, I, I the, he's been hurt the past two years. I, I I've seen injuries the past two years, and it does make me wonder. So the, he's the just talent is big question mark. He's a big question mark for me, question mark yeah. for me and, and you're right. He was when I first did like wrote it down on a, on a pen and paper before I made the graphic or anything. I'm just he was he was in my my top ten, and then I slowly started putting guys ahead of him. Slowly started, and he fell all the way to 17. And you're right, like I like Rondell Moore a lot more than a lot of the names ahead of him. As far as like town wise, you know this. I love Rondell Moore more than Rashad Bateman. I like Rondell Moore more than Elijah Moore. I like Rondell Moore certainly more than. Amon Ra or Dayami Brown or any yeah. of the other. So uh, from a talent perspective, yeah, of course. But I look at the situation in the in the Falcons, or excuse me, in the uh, Cardinals, and I say, okay, there's a lot of guys ahead of him right now, you know, obviously rookie coming in, and, and there have been injury issues that scare me. And that, 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 that was the thing that, like, it tipped the scale a little bit for me. So I think Rondell Moore is going to be one of those guys that I'm willing to take the shot on mm-hmm. and stash. Um, but I wouldn't even say stash. I think his name with the buzz – yeah, he, he's, he's going to go too early for me. Exactly. I'm never yeah. going to get him. Exactly. I'm never going to get him. Versus where you're going to have to pull the name yeah. on immediate production, you're right, When it, especially when it comes to this He's going to go top 12. Yes, and, yes, and he's, any, he's any gonna, rookie gonna draft, go he's going to go top 12. Yeah, exactly. yeah. He got yeah, drafted it's, early it's enough. A, Everyone knew his name going in. Yeah. High firepower offense. Exactly. They're exciting. They're fun to watch. Yeah. I see with losing Larry Fitzgerald, um, it did already happen or... It's going to happen. It has not officially Regardless, happened. even if it doesn't, yeah. you can't even look through that in anything more than a one-year scope. Yeah. So we're good there. Uh, I don't think they're going to pay Christian Kirk coming in the near future. That's just a personal thing that I felt. No, I, yeah, I do agree with that, uh, yeah. So I think that he can evolve into that role. He is a very exciting electric player. Yes, he has the injury. Yes, he has the size problems. Yeah. And, you know, you got to be able to adjust that NFL level. You know, I, I probably should have left it at 13. I, I really should have. I probably should have given him the, the respect of, you know, it's still just, very it's talented. It's hard I, to look at, like you I said, probably should have bumped him up. and De'Ami yeah. Brown, who I like De'Ami Brown a lot. Uh, both of those. Raw, I'm not going to sit here and. Yeah, both of those were situational. The, both be, of those. Because they have the playing time. They were they were huge upside. And I guess I guess that was the the ultimate, you know, decision maker for me when I when I did it. Because you're right, looking at it like, man, I, I totally see where you're coming from. Uh, let's just talk about Amon Ra and De'Ami Brown. Amon Ra is going into, I mean, it, it's similar to, to Devontae Smith. It might even be better than Devontae Smith as far as coming into a situation where he has the clear-cut opportunity to take over so the starting job. Tyro Williams. They have Tyro Williams. They have uh, Rashad Geronimo Perryman. Geronimo Allison. Yeah, and, and Perryman. Like, it's nobody's. And, and Amon Ross St. Brown is a route runner. Very, He's a technician when it comes to things like that, so I'm not worried about him being able to you know, play at any NFL offense. I have no doubts in that. Is he as explosive as a lot of the other guys on this list? No, he's not. He He's more of a route runner than he is a pure explosive athlete, but he's still good enough. I, I think there's just special, special upside there, and you're right. It, it is bold a little bit, but to me, I, I look at the, the Lions as a team. Hey, they're going to be throwing the football a lot over the next two years. I see Amon Ra has, has the chance right now, day one, being a very prominent part of that passing offense, and another aspect of it, the reason he was actually ahead of De'Ami Brown, this was the, the tiebreaker for me, it was Jared Goff. Jared Goff is, what, what did Jared Goff throw to in for the Rams? Through to route runners, yes. like that's that's what that's that's, that's that what the Rams' good, offense was. Makes, so yeah. so that the connections to me were just too strong. And you're right, like I totally get it. Like, again, I love Rondo more more than Amon Mar- St. Brown, but I did have Amon Ra in my top ten. I, I liked him coming out. I did, and, and I look at him in the perfect spot. I get it. Fourth round pick, you never know. I, it's a bold. It's another bold one. You're right, but you know, I, I didn't make this this list to be you know 
Yeah. No, I, yeah, mean, I, made, is, you I, know, mean, I made it for myself and, well, and, and like to really said, call my shot a little bit. To really do it because it's hard when you start crunching it's numbers. It's so hard. Now, I want you to talk about your number eight in Terrace Marshall, though. I think that's too high for him. I think yeah. this is a, an offense with tons of weapons that are still looking to grow themselves in a DJ Moore. I get I really it. want to see make that next step. It's still the CMC show, and who knows with Sam Darnold. Terrace Marshall, number eight. Yeah, you know, even when I was recording the video, I even like I just a peek a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, I'd certainly I tur- certainly stopped and thought about it. I was like, man, I, I I you know if I redid this list right now, like I I do understand I might even consider taking it down. But you know, at the end of the day, I I, I believe in it. I, I believe really like in Terrence the talent Marshall? of a Terrace yes, Marshall. Yes. First of all, that's step one. Okay, I really believe in the talent of Terrace Marshall. Period. And two, I love what the Panthers are doing offensively. I do. I I love Joe Brady. I love that offense, and I love the weapons they have. I think I think it has a chance to be a powerhouse. I think that I think this offense with the weapons they have and and what they're going to be do able to do. I think they're going to be similar to what the uh, Steelers were able to do with three wide receivers that were relevant. Exactly. I think Terrace Marshall has that opportunity, and I think the upside long term is special. I really do. I think by the by the end of that two year window that I was talking about, Terrace Marshall is the wide receiver two in that roster. And I, and I think he's a big part of the offense. I do. So, yeah, and I Is get it. Is there a world where CMC, he becomes the one? I, I like DJ Moore too much at this Still point. So, Moore, I'm not I'm too. not willing to say it. DJ Moore is just more explosive. He's more, he, he's the more, he's the better athlete overall. So, yeah. I feel like DJ Moore has been in this weird stance for a while, though, of very Yeah, we're good. waiting. Well, we're so, waiting. Just because it's the same way. That I, I'm not even going to say Cortland Sutton because Cortland Sutton had the injury set back yeah. for a while. Uh, but for me personally, I think a Cortland Sutton for the Denver Broncos is a guy with the skill set that he has can explode the next level. DJ Moore, we have seen we have seen that way more consistently than a Cortland Sutton. Yeah. But DJ Moore can be a consistent like top fifteen wide receiver. I know he is capable of doing. Yeah. That. And we're just let's waiting. See, we're just waiting. Yeah. Like good. okay, let's see. Take the next step. Still we're really ready. good. He still yeah, fits, he still fits in with all the top ones. But. Absolutely, absolutely. And then Jalen Waddle again, another guy who I, I love. I just may I think it's maybe I'm I am a Dolphins fan and I've really never seen like a wide receiver just pop off. And That's the way our the Yeah, yeah. And the the why the way our offense is run, I, I think it's more balanced than that to just like lean on a, on one specific wide receiver. I think Jalen Waddle has a good he he of of like that clump of wide receivers that we're talking about. He's the most explosive of any of the guys there. Even above a Kadarius Tony, who's incredibly explosive as well. Jalen Waddle's special. He really is. He could be Tyreek Hill. He really could. So that's why he's as high as he is. But the reason he's not even higher is just because you know I I took the value of the running back a little bit and I I just I wondered about okay what's he really going to do in this offense over the you know I, I don't know so yeah um I'll I'll talk about Kadarius Tony for a second and I'll I'm I don't want to do this everyone's down on him. Everyone's down on him. I am too. Are you too? Yeah, it's. I'm scared because it, it is. Listen, he's fun to watch the highlights. It's fun to think the, of that. He I is don't the know how ultimate. He's, gonna do it. he's the ultimate trendy. Oh, this feels like a bus pick. And I feel like the. Yeah. It, it is a. It's an, the ultimate group thing, and maybe that's just like I, I'm looking at everyone, and or and I know I know that you don't follow fantasy Twitter, so I know that is yeah. like truly just your your own opinion that you came to, and I know a lot of other people come to the same thing, and I I have done the same thing too. I look and I'm like, man, if there's gonna be a bus of the wide receiver position in the first round, it's Kadarius. Tony, it's right? Skill set feels like it. Well, because there's only one thing that I not one thing, but there's only one style of play that I see him doing. And if that does not translate well, I don't know where else you can fit him and plug him in. If he doesn't work as that gadget, speedy, you know. Because yeah. listen, I'm. This I don't is, think his hands are that elite. I don't think his route yeah, running is I that, get it. that elite. He no, it's good. not. It's not elite. It's, it's not elite at all. Exactly. His route running is raw. Uh, this is the way I look at it. Kadarius Tony uh, developed a lot from his you know second to last year in college to his last year in college. He he has a really good chance. He he is an unfinished product for sure. But the the raw tools are there. The raw tools are just uh, like from an explosive athletic standpoint, it's just as impressive. Just just from the raw physical tools, and I know you might. I hope you don't scoff at this, but I really believe this. It's just as impressive as, as like a Devontae Smith. It's it's almost as impressive. He's as more a, impressive. When yeah, it comes to that. Uh, from, athletically, th- he's special. To think about how twitchy he is. Yes. How fast he is. Okay. Agility, so, side to side quickness. I just don't know if I trust the New York Giants based on their past. Hey, I don't trust Daniel Jones. It. I don't. He goes to the Chiefs. We all aren't having this conversation. None of us are. Exactly. He's, he's way higher on this list. Yeah, for sure. You're absolutely right. And and I, I totally get it. I, yeah, no, for sure. I, I just don't agree. know how they're going to be able to get him out of that use because if you line him up out wide, I, I know there's times at Florida where he made it happen and he was able to do some very good things. Mm-hmm. But a lot of drags, a lot of short slants, a lot mm-hmm. of let's get this guy the ball within that one to five yard range so he can do the rest of the work himself. 
Yeah. That's, a, that's the style of play that he is. But if he gets six to seven touches that way, he's valuable. Very. Right? Like, if he gets six to seven touches, like, in fantasy, your wide receiver gets a good wide receiver. Your wide receiver one gets seven to eight touches. It, it, your wide receiver two, you know, you hope gets five touches. You well, hope gets to, six touches. And to think, it, and I mean, a it, it could maybe. go in his favor even more to think that if a lot of those are tunnel screens or if there's some handoffs or if there's any type of yeah. play like that. I, I think he has, the, he has the chance to be a weapon, and that's why he's there. It, it's potential. You're sure. No, for he, sure. He I, I put him. There. I'm I, just worried. I totally get it. There, there's, he is the ultimate boom bust. He's the biggest boom bust, I feel like, of anybody you could talk about here as far as, like, yeah, the the, the ceiling is very high, but the floor is, is you know, out of the league in a couple of years. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, uh, no thoughts on Rashad Bateman 12? You like that? You're good with that? I like Rashad Bateman a lot. You um, like Rashad Bateman I, I, more I was, than I do. I was, yeah. Yes, and I'm just kind of worried about where they're going to plug everything in. You're, um, you're worried the same way I am. You're worried about the, the worried about, passing offense, I'm right? about Lamar. Yeah. yeah I, because yeah, So too. looking at the what, what Baltimore had last year, we all acknowledge that Lamar was not a passer. He's not. No. He can do it all. He does have the ability to do it all. But yeah. you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're going to sit there and act like Lamar is a true drop back passer. He's not. You, you let him tear you up with the legs, and then when the legs open up the passing game, that's the Lamar that I like. Yeah. I don't like Lamar that has to make tight window throws or advanced reads when it comes I, to that stuff. I completely agree. Why, why make a fish try to climb a tree? Yeah. You, you don't do it. There's no point. You have yeah. all these other things. Yeah. So where's Rashad Bateman going to fit in with Hulu, or, uh, not Hulu, uh, right. Hollywood? I have heard the chance that Julio goes there, though. That would have been... That would be crazy. Been, <laughs> but, you know, Hollywood Brown yeah. and stuff, it's it's different. Yeah, I, I you you nailed it. I, I absolutely agree. That's what, He's where he is because he, he goes into a situation where he could be the clear number one from day one, and that sounds awesome. To me, he's he's the ultimate 650 yards, five touchdowns, and yeah. just a lot of disappointment from fantasy I was owners. just thinking about the yards like, in my head. There yeah. is a world where he can easily hit 1,000. He can he can hit a thousand for sure. But, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, for I'm sure. gonna look up. But, what, but like yeah. but like you said though, I think it's more likely that he does the six fifty. He does the five or six touchdowns. He becomes a steady red zone threat, kind of like a um, oh, not a Devin Duvernay. Help me out. There's one that's a little later on. He came out of Tech. Miles Boykin. Miles Boykin. Yeah. Yeah. I think he can do a Miles Boykin style role and do better at that than what he did. Mm-hmm. Looking up Lamar stats. I'm looking up uh, just the players receiving stats. That's rushing and receiving, yeah. So I was just curious. I was just curious where the wide receivers were as far as yards. Lamar, you want Lamar ran for a thousand. He total passing. Oh, that's not going to be the Mark one. Andrews led with seven hundred one. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that's just so ridiculously. No, sad. Hollywood did with seven seven to sixty nine. Yeah. So that's just even, even so still, bad. That fits right into the whole six fifty range. Well, I'm pretty sure Lamar only threw for like twenty eight hundred. Yeah, no, he pe- he, he, he threw for 27. 27. Yeah. yeah, so so the amount of passing yards that, that are in there, yeah, it's it's really not even as yeah, there's just not well, a that's lot what of I'm saying. So if he throws for that again and that was that was with them th- like they give they him give him, him three thousand. Give him three thousand yards, give him a bump up. It's very, still very hard to support a thousand yard offense exactly. with Hollywood with a Mark Andrews and a new I mean, because Devin Duvernay is not going anywhere either. You no. know, they're they're hoping he grows. I still like goal. him, yeah. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, so I, I, we're, we're on the same page there. Elijah Moore, I just want to touch on really quick. I, I think he has the chance. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I do think he has the chance uh, to to be, you know, very impactful in that in that offense. I, I really do. I think he has a chance to do, you know, a lot of the same things that the 49ers did with, oh, help me out, they, their wide receiver they drafted two years ago. You're talking about Ayuk? Uh, not Ayuk, Debo. the other, Debo, Debo Samuels. Thank you. So I, I think he has a chance to do a lot of the same things that Debo Samuel did. He's very good over the middle. He's tough as hell. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just, I like that a whole lot. Um, I want to touch on a couple of these running backs I have in the later part of my list. And then if you want to go anywhere else, we can. Go ahead. Uh, Larry Roundtree is the last one I really want to talk about. Larry Roundtree, to me, like sixth round pick, I think. Like late, late running back that, you know, you never put these those kind of guys. He's in my top 20. He's at 19 right now. Uh, went to the Chargers. To me, I, I, I do believe, I believe this. I believe he will be running back two to start the season. Uh, you, you look at the roster that they brought in or the, the running backs that they have on that roster, and, and it's it's just not special. You know, they, they bring in a Joshua Kelly from last year, like a third or fourth round pick. He was a bust. He, he was not able to perform when Eckler got hurt. Justin Jackson, same kind of story, was not able to carry the load when when uh, Eckler got hurt. And now it's like, 
I think Larry Roundtree can, and I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be this close to the starting lineup, uh, and I think he's going to get. I think he's going to get plenty of touches, and you know, Eckler. I, I think it could end up being a, t- a two-headed monster a little bit, and it'd be Eckler one, and then uh, obviously Larry Roundtree two. But I could see him getting 35 percent of uh, the carries. Yeah, well, that's bold to say too, considering where he was drafted. Because a lot of times yeah, those it, guys, it is. That's another be, bold they, they can be yeah. hard roster spots, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. But you know, you were you nailed it with Kelly not being the guy. Yeah, him having all the opportunity. And then some of the other you, running backs. You knew I hated him. him. You knew oh, I didn't yeah, like him coming out. Yeah, I asked you. I was like, "What? What is it?" And then yeah. he was given that opportunity, and then some to prove you wrong. Man, he only proved you right. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, absolutely. Lackluster. Fair enough. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention on Josh Palmer for a second. If they don't make any other moves with that wide receiver room, same story. And, well, because if, you know Mike Williams, so they don't know if they're going to pay him yet or not. I, not. Exactly. So I would say you want to kind of see where the future is going. Yeah. There's opportunities there in this high flying passing style offense yeah. in a Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer, pretty good route runner, boundary type of receiver. We could, you know, I, I do he believe. Reminds me of a lot of the wide receivers that come out of Tennessee. They, yeah. They're very well balanced, very, very good players. Mm-hmm. They just don't exceed exceptionally in one area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Juwan Jennings, you know, like they're, they're very good yeah. wide receivers, but when it comes to making the roster, it's kind of hard to, yeah. to pop out at that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And to me, Josh Palmer, like I liked him a lot more than I thought I was going to. He's a guy that I actually – I, I, he was not really on my radar uh, pre-draft. Obviously, I knew about Especially him living in Tennessee. Uh, certainly not third round. Then, obviously, doing my my draft profiles, I watched everybody that was drafted the first three rounds. I go back and watch, and I'm like, oh, shit, he's a route runner. He can run some routes. Yeah. Oh, he's a little bit more explosive than I expected. Oh, shit, I kind of actually like Josh Palmer, and I agree with the third round think, grade. That's I crazy. Think the quarterback play certainly didn't expect it. And the people who listen that are Vols fans, because there's there's a lot of them out yeah. here. In the, you know, it's Tennessee right here. Uh, they can admit that the quarterback play has kept so many good names at the wide receiver position down for them. Yeah, Look absolutely. at Marquez Calloway. He stepped up for the Saints in a big way. A lot yeah. of people don't, but he he does their special teams now. Yeah. He was able to fit in areas where Michael Thomas was hurt, and they, they lost Emmanuel Sanders in some ways. Yeah. He's always been there, always been a good weapon. Yeah. Went undrafted but was able to produce, and we're seeing that now. Absolutely. The quarterback play affects the wide receiver position in a bigger way than people admit. For sure. Absolutely agree. And anywhere else you want to go with this? No, I think I – think I like the list a lot. You're really. good. All right, awesome. Hey, I, I'm I'm glad. Uh, that's it. We got 46 minutes in. Uh, I think we can call it. You want to talk about anything else? No, I think we're good. You're good. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you are interested, you can watch the full breakdown of me breaking down the entire uh, rankings. Uh, I certainly repeated myself a couple times in this video, just kind of trying to explain myself. I think I did a good job just explaining every pick. I, I literally go from 24 to one, talking about my thought process for every single one. Hey, let me let it, let me know in the comments where, where you disagree. What do you what do you hate the most? What do you dislike? Look, rankings are fun because they're always going to be divisive. You're always going to disagree with something, and, and it's totally fine. And and I'll, I'll, as somebody who's done a lot of rankings recently and, and probably going to continue to, I can honestly say I spend so much time doing the rankings. And then when you start to pick it apart, I, I, I've been on here multiple times and you've mentioned something. I'm like, yeah, I, w- I would I would do it. I would should do it different right now if I could. You know, it's it's funny how that works and, and how like they're just tough. And it's all it's just it's what sports fans do when when there's nothing else to talk about. So that's that's where we're at this time exactly. of the year. Uh, I have no idea what the plan is for next week, but we'll have something next week. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace. Seven.